Welcome to the Creative Hugser. In this video, I'll show you how to create a halftone effect in the Fendi photo. Halftones consist of dots of various sizes and spaces. When you put the dots together, they create a tone or a gradient. The halftone effect is usually done in printing so that less ink is used when printing an image. You'll see many magazines and newspapers use this technique, and it's also found in old comic books. First, go to File Open and select the downloaded image. Second, go to the Adjustments panel and select the Black and White Adjustment. The halftone effect works best with black and white or grayscale images. Select the Background Image layer and the Black and White Adjustment layer. Right click on the selected items and select Merge Visible. This combine the black and white adjustment with our original image into one pixel layer. Uncheck the black and white adjustment and the original image in the Layers panel. Now, go to the Live Filters icon and select Halftone. The Live Filters allow you to non-destructively edit your images by putting those changes onto a separate layer. Therefore, you can also come back and make changes to that layer if you need to. In the Live Halftone dialog box, set the screen to monochrome. Then, set the dot to cosine. The screen shows the ways the tone or gradient will be generated. Aside from monochrome, you have color, line, and circular. In the dot, cosine makes your dot smooth, while the round makes your dot sharp. Next, set the cell size to 25. The cell size determines the size of each dot, line, or circle depending on the screen type you've chosen. The more you increase the cell size, the bigger the dots, lines, or circles become. Now, let's move on to contrast. Set the contrast to 60. The contrast increases or decreases the tonal contrast, which is the brightness between each of the cells. After that, go to the screen angle and set it to 135 degrees. The screen angle lets you change the direction of the dots, lines, or circles. Go to the blend mode and set it to hard mix. Other blend modes you could choose are glow and reflect. Next, set the opacity to 75%. If you're wondering about the gray component replacement and the undercolor removal, those are available when you set the screen to color. The gray component replacement controls the contrast of areas that are between the color cells. The undercolor removal controls the influence of the color cells. You can't really see this effect take place on this image, but you would increase this if you wanted to desaturate your image, thus getting rid of some of your color cells. Now, let's go to the Layers panel. Click on the Add Pixel Layer icon to add a new pixel layer. You only have to do this if you want to add some color to your image. With the new pixel layer selected, go to the Tools panel and select the Gradient tool. Drag the gradient from the top to the bottom. Then select the bottom point and go to the color panel. Click on the icon in the right corner and select wheel to bring up the color wheel. To choose the colors I wanted, I chose complementary colors, which are two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Set the bottom point to a reddish, slightly orange color. Then click on the top point. A complementary color for our bottom point will be something in the blues. Set the top point to a blue shade. To get the exact color codes for this, go to the swatches panel and double click on the color to bring up the color chooser. The blue hex code is 00D0FF. The red hex code is FF4200. Your hex code numbers may be a little different though. Let's change these colors though to a more specific red and blue. Go to the swatches panel. 
Select the bottom point and change it to the following fill color, F3651D. Then select the top point and change it to 125ED0. After that, go to the Layers panel. Select the Filled Pixel Layer. Next, set the Blend Mode to Hard Light. Then, lower the opacity to about 80%. The opacity percentage depends on how much color you want to add to your image. You can increase it more or decrease it to your liking. To change your halftone effect to lines or circles, double click the halftone layer in the Layers panel to open up the dialog box. Next, click on Screen and select Line or Circular. I'll choose Line. Then adjust the cell size. I actually like how the lines look at 25, so I'm going to leave it there. Now, change your contrast if you need to. I decreased it to 50. Finally, adjust your screen angle. I'm going to leave it at 135 degrees because I like the diagonal lines. Now, let's look at the circular screen. Go to Screen and select Circular. As with the line, make adjustments to the cell size, contrast, and screen angle as you see fit. I set the cell size to 15, contrast to 45. With this, you don't really see a difference in adjusting the screen angle, so you don't have to change that. And this is how to create a halftone effect in Affinity Photo. Which look do you like better? Comment below either the monochrome, line, or circular look. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thank you for watching.